So if you watch my 12 biggest Nintendo Switch games for the month of September video, you would know that, well, there's a lot of games coming out for the Nintendo Switch. And the Switch month was starting out with a bang, with Spyro Reignited Trilogy finally coming to the Nintendo Switch. Now, of course, this released last year on the PS4 and the Xbox One. We actually covered the Xbox One version of the game on the channel, and admittedly, I really enjoyed it. But it did seem kind of strange that there was no Nintendo Switch version of the game. We then did subsequent videos with Jordan French, who had inside information into the Spyro universe, and he was kind confident that this game was coming to the Switch. Well, the game has finally come to the Nintendo Switch with Spyro Reignited Trilogy, and I've been playing this game for quite a bit, and I definitely have a lot of things to say about this game, because admittedly, 3D platformers seem to have a good home on the Nintendo Switch, especially retro compilations. So what is Spyro Reignited Trilogy all about? Is this a game that you should pick up for your Nintendo Switch if you're a Switch owner? That's what we're going to figure out in this video. So sit back, relax, make sure you subscribe to the channel, and let's talk about Spyro Reignited Trilogy for the Nintendo Switch. Hey, RGT85. Hey, Sean. Oh my god, it's Stevie Richards! So when talking about Spyro Reignited Trilogy for the Nintendo Switch, we have to talk about the elephant in the room. And that is if you buy the game physically, you still have to download a sizable patch on day one in order to have access to all the games. The download is about 8.5 gigabytes, which means that the entire game is not on the cartridge. And that honestly rubs a lot of Nintendo Switch owners the wrong way. Now you might be saying to yourself, well RGT, on the Xbox One and the PS4, you also had to download a good portion of the game as well. Only the first game was available on the disc if you picked it up physically you still had to download parts 2 and 3. But that was more of a time constraint thing. That was because of the fact that the games weren't quite ready to be put onto the disc at the time of the launch of the game. With the Nintendo Switch version of the game, there's really no reason for them not to be all on the cartridge, except that this was a cost-cutting me measure by Activision. So that's definitely going to rub some people the wrong way. Admittedly, I was pretty annoyed that I had to wait like an hour to download this large patch in order to have access to the whole game. Of course, if you buy the game digitally, that's not something you have to worry about, as everything is available digitally, but if you are a physical collector of the game, yes, it is pretty annoying. Now, Spyro Reignited Trilogy is, of course, three Spyro games all available in one package. You get the original Spyro, you get Spyro 2, and you get Spyro 3. Now, growing up, I never really played Spyro 2 or Spyro 3. Spyro 1 was the main game that I have nostalgia for because me and my buddy used to go to the rental store. We would rent this game over and over again because he had a PlayStation 1, and we had a lot of fun playing this game. So, admittedly, I'm not too familiar with Spyro 2 and Spyro 3. For this video, I did dabble in both of those games, and basically, they're just a bit of an evolution of the original Spyro formula. Spyro 2 adds in more mechanics for Spyro to do in terms of gameplay, and Spyro 3 actually gets pretty crazy. There's different characters you can play as that play very differently than Spyro. There's skateboarding in the game. I don't know, it kind of went off the rails, I feel, with Spyro 3 when it comes to the gameplay of the game because they tried to just do so much when they really should have just stuck with the core gameplay mechanics. But really, most of this video is going to be talking about Spyro 1. I did just want to briefly touch on Spyro 2 and Spyro 3. 3, though. So basically, if you've never played a Spyro game, it is a 3D collectathon. These were very big on the PlayStation 1. Of course, the series veered off course, much like Crash Bandicoot did. They oversaturated the market. But with Crash Bandicoot coming back, Spyro makes sense as well. These are 3D collectathons, like I said, with lots of hidden secrets, lots of things to explore, and of course, lots of different worlds to go in. You basically have these little overworld hub areas, and within these overworld hub areas, you can go to different levels. After you complete a certain amount of tasks, whether it's finding a bunch of dragons, or finding a certain amount of gems, you could then go to another area, another hub world, and then access more levels. One thing that I really liked about the Spyro Reignited trilogy on the Xbox One was just how they sort of formulated this game for a more modern era. A lot of these graphical updates just include graphical updates, but they really improved the gameplay, I felt, in Spyro Reignited trilogy more so than in the previous versions of the game. And thankfully, all of that makes the jump to the Nintendo Switch. The Nintendo Switch version of the game admittedly feels very good. It feels just like the Xbox Xbox One version of the game. One thing you have to talk about when talking about the Spyro Reignited trilogy, though, is of course the graphics in the game. Because I thought this game looked absolutely gorgeous on the Xbox One. It was fantastic. The worlds were very detailed. Spyro himself looked great. All the enemies were great as well. And thankfully, most of the transition made the jump to the Nintendo Switch version of the game. I don't think it quite looks as good as the Xbox One version of the game, but I definitely think it's an accurate representation of the Spyro Reignited trilogy on the other platforms on the Nintendo Switch. One thing I did notice, though, is that 
the game defaults when you're playing in TV mode to a motion blur mode. And when you're running around, you get a motion blur. Honestly, I think this looks pretty crappy. That's just my personal opinion. You can turn it off. And once I turned it off, I thought the game actually looked better. Obviously, that will be varying from person to person. But that was just one thing I definitely noticed when playing Spyro is that I wanted to play with the motion blur off because I felt like it made the game actually look better. One thing that's very surprising to me as well is a game in handheld mode. Now, when you're talking about Activision games on the Nintendo Switch, I've played, of course, Crash Insane Trilogy, and I played Crash Team Racing, the greatest game of all time. And both of these games had a substantial blur when playing in handheld mode. You've seen it with a bunch of different games where the resolution goes down and the game just looks pretty blurry. So I assumed that Spyro was going to be much blurrier in handheld mode, but surprisingly, it's not. I think the game looks fantastic in handheld mode, and I think that's a really big benefit to the Nintendo Switch version of the game is that you can play these three games wherever you go and that's a big deal in my opinion and I think that they did a great job making this game look great in handheld mode along with in TV mode. It doesn't look as good as the Xbox One version of the game but I think it looks damn good for what it is. Now in these three Spyro games, like I said, they are collect-a-thon style games. You're constantly collecting different things in order to access more areas and get deeper into the game. Of course, Spyro has some different tricks up his sleeve. In the first game, he can roll around, he can breathe fire, and he can run into characters in order to knock them down. And you sort of have to figure out which characters you need to charge into, which characters you need to breathe with fire, and which characters you should maybe just avoid and go about your way. Like I said, in two and three, they add in some more mechanics. There's a lot more different things going on. Spyro can swim and Spyro Spyro 2, Spyro can ride a skateboard and play as different characters in Spyro 3, so the gameplay continually evolves, and that's one nice thing about the game, is that even though they're sequels to the main Spyro game, I feel like they did enough things to differentiate it from the main game. Does that make the games better? I think it just comes down to personal preference. For me personally, Spyro 1 is the best game in this collection, and maybe that's a bit of nostalgia, or maybe it's because of the fact that I enjoy the more simplistic nature of this game as far as the 3D platformer is concerned. Most of the best 3 3D platformers that I really enjoyed are games that you pretty much have everything at your disposal right at the start of the game. It's just about the levels. It's about the different enemies you come across. I don't need things like different characters to play as that feel very different from the mainline character. I don't need things like skateboarding in my 3D collect-a-thon games. I think the first Spyro game is definitely the best in the series, but really, it just sort of comes down to personal preference. I'm sure there are a lot of people that prefer the gameplay enhancements of Spyro 2 or maybe even the crazy stuff of Spyro 3 more so than the original Spyro game but really all three games are very good and very well done and definitely worth checking out when you're playing this collection now, of course, since you're getting three games, there's a lot of game to be had here. The games themselves aren't really all that long. You can play the first Spyro game and beat it in about five or six hours. But of course, collecting everything is one of the incentives of the game. If you want 100% the game, you're going to spend more time in the game. And the fact that you're getting three games on here for $40 is honestly a pretty good deal. There's good enough variety in the three games to make them stand out from one another. And the graphics look good enough to where you continually want to play the game. The game runs very well as well. So honestly, I'm pretty impressed with Spyro Reignited Trilogy on the Nintendo Switch. I figured this would have been a sloppy port job. I didn't expect the game to look as good as it does in handheld mode, but it definitely does. Now, of course, the main question is, should you buy Spyro Reignited Trilogy for the Nintendo Switch? And I would say yes, but with an asterisk. Now, if you have a PS4 or an Xbox One and you don't play in handheld mode a lot, there's really no reason to pick up the Nintendo Switch version of the game. Of course, you could pick up the Xbox One and the PS4 version of the game for a much cheaper price. This game has been available for a year, it constantly goes on sale on places like Amazon and GameStop, so you can get the game for cheaper. But if you're only a Nintendo Switch owner, I think it's a good pickup. It's $40, you're getting three games, the games themselves look good, and the games themselves are still fun. They did enough things to make them feel modern while still keeping the retro feel to the game, where you still feel like you're in a 3D collect-a-thon, but it's still fun. The controls are very precise, the graphics are definitely upgraded, and I think they did a really solid job with the Nintendo Switch version of the game. Considering there's three games for $40, it's a real good value for your buck. Now, obviously, there's a lot of stuff coming out in the month of September, but don't sleep on the Spyro Reignited Trilogy. If you're a fan of classic 3D platformers or you have some sort of nostalgia for the original Spyro games, it's definitely a game worth checking out, and I'm pleasantly surprised with just how good the Nintendo Switch version of the game ended up being. So those are my thoughts on the Spyro Reignited Trilogy for the Nintendo Switch. Do you plan on picking up Spyro for the Switch? Is this something that's on your radar? Are you going to wait for a price drop? Is the physical 
version of the game, not having the full game on the cartridge, turning it off, or are you just going to buy it digitally? Let me know in the comments section down below. And as always, guys, thank you for checking out this video. If you are new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications. Check out other videos on the channel. Mitch, do you have anything to add for Spyro Reignited Trilogy on the Nintendo Switch? Oh, a little bit of the bubbly. All right, so at some point in time, Mitch became Chris Jericho. That, that's fine with me. And as always, I will catch you guys on the next video. Later.